look, we've got some old-fashioned spaceman outfits. You're a husky, right? Mouse hunters! What do singing newts, three cats, and a mansion have in common? Nothing. Unless you remember Cat Scratch, a mid-2000s animated Nickelodeon show created by Doug Tenapple. While responsible for things like Earthworm Jim, a myriad of graphic novels, and a lot more, he has been no stranger to controversy. But he did create the show we are speaking about today. Cat Scratch. While only airing between 2005 to 2007, the show left a scratch on your brain to remember the design of these characters, if you were around at the time of it airing. Like, why do I own this plushie of Gordon? Guess I had too much fast food growing up. Thanks, Mom and Dad. There are so many shows from this era, especially in Nickelodeon's catalog, that I personally remember and find fascinating to look into what the show was and ultimately what happened to it. Especially Cat Scratch, a show that when people look back on or speak on seem to have enjoyed its short time on the air. So let's take a look into the quirky, rich cat show that ran through its nine lives through the network scratching it out of existence. You know what didn't get scratched, though? Me! Thanks to today's sponsor, Manscaped, the best in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Yeah. 4.0, I love numbers. I'm one of the first people out there to try the new Lawn Mower 4.0 and my mind is blown at its performance. As someone who dislikes getting collateral damage, as I'm sure you are as well, I have never had a more pleasant and smooth experience than with the Lawn Mower 4.0. Its performance is unmatched. Oh, the perfect body trimmer doesn't exist, you say? <sighs> I was like you once, but I can honestly say it does. The Lawnmower 4.0 has propelled Manscaped to the peak of perfection when it comes to a comfortable grooming experience. A cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces any grooming mishaps thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Who doesn't want their skin safe? That's like the main thing I want and now I got it. You think its greatness stops there? Oh. Do I have news for you? The upgraded trimmer has a 4000K LED spotlight built right in for the precise shave. Some additional guard lengths for your own character customization. Oh yeah, a little thing called wireless charging. Ever heard of it? Through electromagnetic induction, the battery now lasts longer than ever before. You can't be shaving your face and the rest of your body with the same razor. We've evolved as humans, so let's act like it. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you, my friends. Get 20% off and free shipping with code FRINGE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code FRINGE and enjoy the best tools for the job. Unlock your confidence with the new Lawn Mower 4.0 from Manscaped. Thanks once again to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Cat Scratch was an interesting show. We follow three cats, Mr. Blick, Waffle, and Gordon, who inherit all the vast riches of their owner after they passed away. Aside from the mansion and the large fortune left to them, they also have the deceased owner's snarky butler, Hovis, who attends to all their needs with attitude. All three of their cats have their own unique personalities with a greatly added bonus of voice talent behind them. Mr. Blick, voiced by... Snowman! Yes, Wayne Knight. Blick, who likes to think of himself as the leader of the cat trio, is a bossy, mostly snobby cat that deals with the shenanigans of Waffles and Gordon. His nerves are easily stricken when his wants are affected in any way by anyone else. Obsessed with being the center of attention and overall winning in life like he's Charlie Sheen, winning, he thinks himself to be a genius and flaunts the wealth that he has inherited around. Mostly in compensation for his height being the shortest of the three cats. His ears don't count for the height, that's cheating. Waffle, the lovable goofball of the group, is usually the center of stupidity for the situations they all find themselves in. Voiced by Kevin McDonald and his farms, bringing a hopeful yet gullible tone to the character. Touted as the comic relief, he plays a similar character to Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie, although overall may just be a little bit smarter than Ed. Gordon, voiced by Carl himself, Rob Paulson, while not acting like the leader of the trio like Blick tries to do, Gordon is the targeted actual main protagonist of the group with most of the situations in every episode revolving around him. And as the do-gooder of the group, he stands up for what's right and has a big heart, even if that heart has feelings for the neighbor human child, Kimberly. Yeah, I'm just gonna move on from that. There is so much going on at any given time, and things go awry so fast, even regular show is shook. You pissed me off. One of the more fast-paced shows that would hit joke after joke, all the while ridiculous scenarios play out that start from simple beginnings. Episode 1, we don't even spend time meeting the characters. Blick wants to win a rib cook-off, so they blast off into space in hopes of getting some moon rocks for the perfect roasting fire for the ribs, all based off of a story that Gordon read about someone who sold their soul 
to a seal woman. Everything gets messed up, the ribs come out terrible, Blick wins the worst ribs award, and that's on the tame side of things for the show. And that's how it started. A magical wish granting Kraken would be faced, Blick dealing with a vet diagnosis of 24 hours remaining to live, undead dinner parties, changing the very reality of the world as we know it, and golf. Also then losing their money, making robots, a secret world inside of the mansion in which Waffle's a king where he has to face dragon riders, superhero powers, a duck wrestling match, freaking aliens! and golf. What more needs to be said? These wacky adventures were a visual treat, especially to go back and watch and reminisce of watching it back in the day during its limited release schedule from 2005 to 2007. There was a tried and true effort to stick out from the crowd, and in a way, before it even was a show, it had to do just that. That journey to this show being made is weird, yet intriguing. One of Doug's graphic novels was called Gear a limited six-issue run comic book series that follows four cats, Mr. Black, Simon, Waffle, and Gordon, tasked with capturing a guardian to help protect the town. Without spoiling gear further than that, this gritty, dark, and even violent graphic novel was the inspiration that would later turn into Nickelodeon's Cat Scratch. Yeah, kind of a far stretch to go from this... to this. Regardless, this test animatic, which would try and hold a bit of what gear looked like, was the final in-between until we got what Cat Scratch looked like and became. And like I said, the show was heckin' good, dude! Now I'm not saying it's the greatest and certainly not my favorite. But having fond enough memories and going back through it now, it's clear that this show had something that was unique and worked for it. But we all know good old Nickelodeon, they don't like that. They want safe, non-risk cartoons to hold them up. So sadly, after season one, it was over. Nick, however, aired some reruns of the show on their sister channel, Nicktoons, until the start of 2009, and briefly once more in December of 2015. The show had attention towards it, fast food toys, award nominations, and clearly a lot of people remember it well enough to still talk about it over 15 years past its premiere. That's how this show lives on, mostly. Episode bits are scattered across the internet with no official release of the full season. Two random segments make appearances on Nick Picks Volume 3 and five on DVD, and that's it. Not even anything for my video now. What, do you prefer Game Boy Advance video? Well, too bad, it ain't there either. But hey, it had some Nick.com games at least. To be fair, some critics at the time gave the show middling reviews, not fully going into a great nor awful territory. But no matter what any review says, and especially whatever I say, it's reliant on you and how you feel. If you like it, that's great. And if it wasn't for you, that's also completely fine. Not that I need to explain that to you. It's a shame that a show like this that actually did some different things kept your attention and in my opinion was fun, getting once again Nickelodeon's cold steel-toed boots stomping down on it. It barely had a chance to leave a paw print, but it did the best job it could. Even Nick Magazine brought everything back full circle with three two-page Cat Scratch comics, coming from a graphic novel turned into a show and back into a comic. And by the way, may I just add, Nick Magazine was pretty awesome. <sighs> Simpler times. I just had a birthday. I'm getting old. Morbidness aside, I appreciate shows like this. Would it have been awesome to have seen a minimum of another season of the show? Sure, the show definitely deserved it, but I am just happy we at least had it. It's better to have had at all than to have never had, and at least ending on higher notes rather than outstaying its welcome is a good thing. I fully enjoyed hanging out in Nostalgia Land revisiting this show to see how it held up, and I must say, it did a pretty good job at holding up. I enjoy the voice talents, the fast-paced, over-the-top adventures, and Cats are cool, all right? I would love nothing more than to see this show released in a proper way, definitely in better quality than the limited ways it's scattered online, and accessible to older and newer audiences to rediscover or discover for the first time. Cat Scratch did deserve better at the time, but do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I have wanted to spend time looking at this show once again for a while now, so it was fun to finally sit down and get around to it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if it sparked some good memories for you or you discovered something new for yourself, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this every week on the channel. Thanks for spending a few moments of your day here with me. I will see you soon with another video, but until then, later.